Mr. President, for me, Senator Hatfield's passing this summer, just as it seems that the Congress has become embroiled in a never-ending series of divisive and polarizing debates and battles, drove home that Senator Hatfield's approach to government is now needed more than ever in our country. Senator Hatfield was the great reconciler. He was proud to be a Republican with strongly held views, yet he was a leader who, when voices were raised and doors were slammed and problems seemed beyond solution, Senator Mark O. Hatfield was one who could bring Democrats and Republicans together. He'd look at all of us, smile, and always start by saying, now colleagues, and then he would graciously and calmly lay out how on one issue or another, I see my, friend, my friends, Senator Cochran here from Mississippi, who knows this so well for their work together on appropriations, it might one day be a natural resources question, might one day be a budget issue or a health issue or an education issue. But Senator Hatfield had this extraordinary ability to allow both sides to work together so that an agreement could be reached where they could secure some of the principles that they felt strongly about. They wouldn't get them all, but they would get a number of them. And that, of course, is the key to what is principled by partisanship. Now, it was not very long ago, it seems, when Senator Hatfield walked me down that center aisle when I had the honor of being selected Oregon's first new United States Senator in almost 30 years. And I remember coming to the Senate, new Senator, and watching Senator Hatfield at work. Sometimes he would be with Senator Kennedy and a big flock of the Senate's leading progressives. And sometimes he would shuttle over to visit with Senator Dole and a big group of conservatives. And somehow the public interest was addressed. And the question then becomes, how do you do it? What was the Hatfield approach all about? To me, Senator Hatfield was religious, but he was never intolerant. He was idealistic, but he was never naive. He was willing to stand alone, but never one to grandstand. But it was not his public life that sh shaped his beliefs and his principles. Those were forged in the most hellish of places, World War II in the Pacific. As a landing craft officer in the United States Navy, Senator Hatfield witnessed firsthand the battles at Iwo Jima and Okinawa. He was one of the first Americans to see the devastating effects of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. Later, he served in French Indochina where he saw the economic disparities that would later lead to war in Southeast Asia. Those images remained with him throughout his life, acting as a touchstone for his belief that the world should be a safer and more peaceful place. It was Senator Hatfield's belief, those beliefs that served as the foundation for his career in the Senate and for his opposition to the Vietnam War and to the proliferation of nuclear weapons. 